I'd like to introduce Dr. Akbar Khan from Toronto in Canada, who is the founder of the Cancer Medicare Centre. Thank you for joining me, Akbar. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. Could you tell me when you first heard about LDN? Yeah, we first heard about, uh, about LDN uh, about five years ago. Um, it was from, uh, from a patient. Um, this is how we hear about a lot of our um, complementary therapies it's through patients because um, drugs like this, uh, there's no sponsorship for it. Very cheap drugs, generic drugs, uh, drug companies not actively out there promoting these drugs. So we hear them, we hear about them either through patients or through our own research. Mm -hmm. So did you start using it five years ago? Yeah, well, it was about five years ago, and uh, what we did was uh, a patient brought it to our attention, so we started doing some research, and we found uh, a very useful website um, called uh, www.ldninfo.org, uh, and that website was founded by the doctor who discovered the use of LDN, which was Dr. Bihari, uh, and it's now run by uh, a colleague of his, Dr. Gluck. And on that website, there's a lot of uh, factual information about this medicine, and uh, that's how we really started to learn about it. Mm -hmm. And what's been your experience in that five years of prescribing LDN? Well, what we're seeing is that uh, it's a very useful drug. It's definitely very, very safe. Um, it requires very little monitoring um, in, in the way of uh, blood tests um, because it has uh, essentially no toxicity. Um, we are definitely seeing results. Um, what we're finding is that um, it's much better to use the drug in earlier stages of cancer because it does take time to work since it's so gentle. Uh, you know, what, my estimation would be that it takes uh, two or three months at least before you start to see the results. Um, so I, I prefer to use it in earlier stages of cancer, uh, you know, before the patient is, is very end stage and have failed all their chemos and are coming to us with a very poor prognosis. So uh, we're definitely seeing results for various types of cancer. And in fact, we have a, a case that is uh, publishable right now uh, of a fellow with a tongue cancer who was told uh, about two years ago when he was diagnosed that uh, his tongue had to be removed and to treat the cancer. And he absolutely refused because there would be no quality of life. So we treated him with the LDN uh, along with some uh, vitamin D. And uh, now he's in complete remission uh, he just sent me his MRI uh, scan uh, a few weeks ago, and I've looked everything over, and, and we're going to hope to, we're hopefully uh, going to publish the case. Wow, that, that's amazing, isn't it? Uh, yes. What other treatments do you use alongside of LDN if patients come to you early? Uh, well, we, we definitely make sure that they're supplemented adequately with vitamin D, uh, and that often means a uh, high dose, so, so much higher than what the, the uh, standard guidelines would recommend. Um, and we do that with blood monitoring to make sure they don't have toxicity. Um, we also use uh, various natural medicines. Now, that's, that's not my area of expertise. So we have a naturopathic doctor on site who uh, the patients also consult with. Uh, and then he'll prescribe appropriate uh, evidence-based natural medicines. Uh, also very gentle, very safe. Um, then for some patients who want a little bit more aggressive therapy, we do intravenous therapies as well. Um, and uh, one of the drugs that we're using is uh, called dichloroacetate or DCA. Um, that's a more powerful drug than LDN. Also has more side effects uh, and requires more close monitoring. So some people are candidates for that. Um, then we have uh, a drug which uh, is a copper binding agent and we use that to create a controlled copper deficiency. And that's been studied very well in the US uh, has been found to work as an angiogenesis inhibitor to blocking the, the growth of blood supply in tumors. Uh, and it has clinical data behind it as well. It has phase two trials that support its use. So we're using that drug as well. That's called tetrathiomolybdate. Um, and we have a number of other off-label drugs, which are, again, they're not approved for cancer, but there is some study behind it that shows benefits in cancer. Uh, an example would be uh, something like ribavirin, which is an antiviral drug, but it also has anti-cancer properties. So that's a small sampling of, of what we're doing. And I mean, obviously, there's, there's more drugs than that, which probably you don't have time to hear about today. <laughs> <laughs> so what would your opinion be of somebody who's been diagnosed with cancer? What would you suggest they do? 
Well, um, the ones that uh, are diagnosed with cancer where it's curable uh, readily by conventional means, I would um, you know, recommend that they should take the conventional treatment. However, there's patients that are diagnosed with uh, rare cancers where the oncologists don't really know what to treat it with because there's, there's no good study behind it. Um, just because it is so rare, it's hard to research it. Uh, so those patients, I think they should be looking elsewhere. Um, and then patients who have been diagnosed with cancer that is metastatic at the outset, and they're being told that it's not curable, uh, and the prognosis is not very good with conventional treatments, I think they should be also looking elsewhere. Um, and LDN would be one of the options. Well, thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me.